Last week, Nintendo thanked the FBI for arresting Bowser and sending him to jail. That's it. That's the video. Okay, seriously though. Last week, a man named Gary Bowser was sentenced to 40 months in a federal prison for uh, selling stuff that let you run pirated games on your Switch. All right, folks, before we get into the video, I just wanna remind you all to please sub to the channel and turn on notifications because it really does help. Okay, so back in October, 2020, the US Department of Justice released a statement saying that Gary Bowser, along with a man named Maxwell Luarn, both members of Team Executor were arrested and pending trial. Team Executor were a hacking group that sold mod chips and other tools for jailbreaking video game consoles, letting you run pirated games on them. They were actually in operation for a while, according to reporting done by Ars Technica's Kyle Orland, who has sources pinning Bowser as kind of a PR guy for Team Executor over the years. Orland's report also notes that Bowser has been arrested before for being part of a counterfeit DVD ring right here in Toronto. Also, he was arrested literally a few blocks away from me and across the street from my favorite Momo restaurant. So uh, go to Loga's and buy a jar of the hot sauce. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Anyway, according to Orland's reporting, the video game hacking scene weren't all super excited by TX selling hacks for profit, which goes against the unwritten hacker code of ethics. But TX was selling something and it was actually pretty crazy. According to a lawsuit filed by Nintendo in 2020 and obtained by Polygon, TX were best known for a device called the SX Pro, which was a USB dongle that let you install a new OS onto any Switch release before June 2018 that let you download and run pirated games. So to some degree, it's understandable why Nintendo would be so interested in taking Bowser and his compatriots down. They were basically letting people steal Nintendo games. But the way the Department of Justice puts it is a little bit more intense than that. Here's a quote from Acting Assistant Attorney General Brian C. Rabbit of the Department of Justice's Criminal Division. These defendants were allegedly leaders of a notorious international criminal group that reaped illegal profits for years by pirating video game technology of US companies. These arrests show the department will hold accountable hackers who seek to commandeer and exploit the intellectual property of American companies for financial gain, no matter where they may be located. Side note, I know that everyone is covering the story because we all think it's funny that the guy's name is Bowser and Nintendo is going after him because you know, Bowser's the guy from the Nintendo games. But I think the fact that this dude's name is Brian C. Rabbit is way funnier. Anyway, basically the Justice Department went super hard on these guys because they see that there is a big difference between distributing the results of your hacks for free and selling your hacks to other people for profit. Bowser pled guilty in October. Then in December, he agreed to pay $10 million to settle the lawsuit with Nintendo of America which sure seems like a lot of money that a guy who sold hacks that only worked on a small percentage of Nintendo Switches might not have. Then last week, Bowser got sentenced to 40 months in jail. That's three years and four months in jail, all for selling stuff that let you play Mario for free. To be fair, he only has to pay $4.5 million now, but that's still a lot of money. In their statement, the DOJ said that Bowser's actions as part of TX led to an estimated $65 million in losses for video game companies over the years, which seems like an insane number. And a few days later, Nintendo made a statement thanking the FBI and a bunch of US government orgs, which in the words of Kotaku's Ian Walker, reads like Nintendo thinks they brought in the Pablo Escobar of hacking or something. It's kind of not to mention the fact that the US government initially wanted Bowser to serve five years of jail time. Look, I know I'm becoming the, is piracy really that bad person on this channel? But like, is piracy really so bad that we're gonna put a guy in jail for three years and make him pay $4.5 million? Just seems like a lot. Like making money off of pirated games is definitely kind of scummy. I don't really support that, but the punishment does feel a little disproportionate. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a person who downloaded a lot of Game Boy Advance ROMs from the Pirate Bay back in 2007, and then got a very threatening email from my ISP that made my parents make me promise to never downloaded pirated games again. Uh, if you're watching this ad, by the way, I'm uh, sorry for lying about that. Anyway, I guess the point of this whole video is that we all enjoyed the story because the pirating guy had a funny name, but it feels a little shitty to laugh now that his life is basically over because of a few stupid decisions and archaic copyright laws. We did have a short shoots once in the office because we used to film in the in the space where people walked between our office and the uh, the office where like the the like the engineers worked basically like the the the, the fucking app people and we um, developers they're called developers um, and uh, we had a three hour short shoot once because we got interrupted every five minutes and had to redo the same lines over and over again.